All right, guys, we're live for our first FDF Warrior weekend warrior workout. So today we're going to be doing some basic exercises, doing a cardio circuit to burn some fat, get you guys wake up to wake up uh, for your Saturday. Maybe you're getting chores done today. Maybe you're hanging out and watching TV. Whatever it is, this is a great way to get your blood pumping and your body moving. So we're here uh, to answer questions for the first little bit. Uh, it's very important to do warm-ups. Dynamic warm-ups are best, which means you're incorporating muscle um, usage in your warm-up. You're not doing static stretching. Uh, so warm-up can be anything from a walk to a bike ride to rowing machine. Um, they've got the, uh, the arm pedals you can use. Whatever it is to get your heart pumping a little bit. And after you warm-up, you go into your stretch. And once you're stretching, like I said, it's better to be a dynamic stretch than a static stretch. Static stretching is, an example would be, if we're doing hamstrings, just to sit here and hang and wait for a long time, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, not as good as if you were to move around and get into the, the stretch. So I'm stretching my hamstrings, I'm incorporating my leg muscles. That's going to be a lot better because you're improving blood flow as you're stretching out the muscles, less likely to tear muscles or rip them, and uh, it's going to stave off those injuries a lot better too. So, I don't know uh, if we have any questions. I can't see the screen since I have my beautiful Lisa filming for us today. But um, we'll go over some basic diabetic tips. One being, make sure if you're able to, that you test your blood sugars before your workout. You wanna be at a good level before you jump into your workout because workouts can affect blood sugars. They can go up, they can go down, depending on the type of workout that you're doing and uh, how much insulin you have on board. If you're injecting insulin, your medication may affect this, your water intake, the type of food you had before, or if you are fasting, if you didn't have any food before. These are all variables you want to take into account before you start your workout. So if you want your blood sugars to be around 150 if possible, um, because if your workout does drop you, you'll be able to catch that blood sugar drop before it's too late. Now examples of workouts that can affect that, or that can start that blood sugar drop, is cardio. So cardio is um, kind of what we're doing today. It's something that gets your heart rate up. A uh, great example of cardio is running or bike riding. And this will typically drop blood sugars a lot faster than weight training. So weight training, on the other hand, in a lot of people, can cause a blood sugar rise. And while that's extremely frustrating if you don't know what it's coming from, like when I was first starting out as a diabetic trainer, um, I'd come home from the gym feeling great. You know, I just worked out, so that's good for my diabetes, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, yes it is, but I had a blood sugar rise, and I would come home, test my blood sugar. I know I started around 150, 140 at the beginning of my workout, and then after my workout, I'd be at 180, 200, thinking, what the heck did I do wrong? I went to exercise, and I came back, and my diabetes blood sugars got worse. The, uh, the fact behind that is that cortisol is released, which is a stress hormone, as you're lifting weights because you're putting your body under a lot of stress. You're lifting really heavy weights, so your body stresses out to repair that muscle, and as a result, cortisol is released, causing a rise in blood sugar. So some type 1s and some people who use insulin uh, have to actually inject insulin for those workouts to help avoid those high blood sugars. Or if you're at a pump, like me, Got a pump right here. Um, some people will increase their basal rates for that workout because they know they're going to rise. The basal is the background insulin. Some people take Lantus. Uh, if you're on a pump, you're taking quick acting like Humalog, but it's a, a lot smaller amount. So, to keep in mind, there are lots of things that can and will affect blood sugars, especially during a workout. And if you are to do something like cardio right after taking insulin, there's a great chance that that's going to cause a drop to happen a lot faster, a drop in blood sugar. So to be very cautious about doing that. For me, for example, I wake up early so I can eat my breakfast at least two hours before I stop my workout because that way a lot of the insulin's already out of my system. I know I have more stable blood sugars going into my workout and it's not gonna be a massive fluctuation. Whereas if I were to eat and go straight to the gym, I may see a, a big spike, and then as soon as I start working out, it might see a big drop. So, we wanna keep these things in mind, make sure we're keeping safety as a priority when we work out as diabetics, 
but also not to let these things get in the way of your workouts because working out is extremely important as a diabetic. There are many benefits that have been shown throughout your life, no matter what age you are, to get these workouts in. A, a workout for you, if it's been a long time since you've been to the gym, that could even mean just going for a brisk walk in the morning. To incorporate movement into your lifestyle, get the joints moving, get the blood flowing, and ultimately it's gonna boost your mood, it's gonna make you feel great, and it'll help you improve your blood glucose control as well because any exercise, any movement that's more than you did the day before will improve insulin sensitivity, which increases the likelihood of you living a healthier life with diabetes. So I'm gonna check the time real quick. See what we got, it is 10.10. So we're gonna get ready to uh, start our workout today. Actually, I'll tell you guys the plan for the workout. Today we're going to, um, I'm gonna do half of the workout. So I know I said it was 15 minutes, we're gonna do about seven minutes worth because I want to make sure I explain these exercises to you. So as I explain them, it will take time away from the workout itself. I will be doing the basic versions of the workout. So there's modified versions, there's the advanced versions. I'm going to be doing the basic version because I know a lot of our viewers are beginner lifters or beginner um, exercisers, whatever you want to call them, beginner athletes. And it's more important to exercise safely with proper form than it is to go crazy your first day in because you run the risk of getting hurt. Injuries will put you behind weeks, if not months. So we want you to be safe. We want you to get a good workout in, but to only do as much as you can safely. So, today's workout, we're going to do a fat burning circuit. It's gonna take 15 minutes if you were to do the whole thing all the way through. First up is high knees or high steps. Uh, we're gonna do that for a minute. Second is push-ups, and we can modify them if needed. We're gonna do push-ups for 30 seconds. So for this type of circuit, we're not doing a strict amount of each exercise, we're doing it for a certain time, which means you're not trying to push for those final reps, you're rather trying to keep good form throughout and do as many as you can while the clock is running. Number three, we're gonna do whoops, squats or chair sits is why I have a chair right here. You can see that on the camera. <laughs> After that, we have the gallon water jug row, which you can also use a gallon of milk or a small weight, whatever you think is best. I have my gallon jug of water, however, it's about two thirds full now. I've been drinking it, so it's kind of lighter. I don't know if that's cheating, but drinking water is healthy. Make sure you have lots of water for your workouts. Don't chug it all at once. Try to spread it out throughout the workout, but make sure you stay hydrated. Hydration will help with higher blood sugars, keeping them away from that. And hydration is just good for your body in general, better for muscle recovery, all of the above. And lastly, we're going to do sit-ups, modified if needed. So again, with all of these, I will be doing the modified version to show you guys how to do the basic uh, beginner workouts in our program so that it's safer for you to do so. Now, for each of these, the high knees is one minute, but the rest of them are doing 30 seconds each, and we'll be resting from 30 seconds to one minute between that, so you're doing all of them in a row, rest for 30 seconds to a minute, and then start over. Do all of them in a row. You're gonna repeat that four times. Now, we're gonna do it two times, so I can show you guys the correct form and walk you through it. So, I am going to get my uh, timer up, get it on screen. There we go. Uh, so first we're going to do just a brief warm up. Just some movements. So in your house, wherever you're at, incorporate full body movements, going side to side, getting the obliques in, get some stretching, some movements. If you want, if you're feeling really energetic, you can do some jumping jacks, whatever it takes to get the blood pumping, whatever you are able to do. Maybe that is just some toe raises instead of jumping jacks. Maybe it's high knees, which is our first step, but it's good for warm up as well. This is high steps actually. High knees is more of a jog, running in place, cross the body, whatever it is, just make sure you're moving and using all of those muscles to get movement in, get the blood pumping. Though, as you can probably see, I have my dex comb in my arm. Fantastic place for it, for me. I love it, I'm very lean, so my dex comb, my CGM,
constant glucose monitor is on my arm. It works great for workouts, doesn't get in the way, and enables me to uh, move freely. Anyways, so that is, I'm already warmed up for my, uh, my exercise this morning, but if you need more warm-up time, make sure you take it. Like I said, we can do some dynamic stretching to incorporate more movement while stretching. All right, so let's start the timer. With high knees up first, here we go. So high knees, like I said, is running in place, but I'm doing modified, so high steps. As fast or as slow as you need to do it. You could twist with it if you want, but we're just gonna stay right in place like a marching band. So this is going to be, like I said, one minute. We're already 20 seconds in. Not bad, a third of the way through the first exercise. You're gonna be feeling it right up here in your legs. You might feel a little bit out of breath if you're not used to these movements. I'm talking a lot, so I'm kind of out of breath. <laughs> and we are just about 40 seconds in. Again, these are high steps. You can also do high knees if this is too easy for you. We are doing the beginner version. 50 seconds, you got 10 seconds left of this. And remember, you can do all these exercises at home. That is the entire purpose of them. That's why we have a chair and a water jug, nice and easy. All right, that is one minute. Next is push-ups. So as you guys are probably familiar with, this is a proper push-up. However, like I said, we're doing modifies today. We have this chair, the candle wants to count kind of close. You can do it here. The chair makes it a little bit easier. If the chair is too hard, walk over here. You can even use the wall. That, that's too hard. Even this. This is still good exercise, okay? So whatever level you are at is the exercise that you're gonna use. At 30 seconds in, now squats and false chair sits. For squat, feet shoulder apart, like you're sitting in a chair, and pop back up. Just like you're sitting in a chair. But what's better, we can sit in a chair. So, if the squats are too difficult, body weight squats, you're gonna position yourself next to your chair, sit, stand right back up. Pop down, lightly sit, pop right back up. Now, if this is too fast, you can relax a little bit and rock, Get right back up, but remember, I'm trying to get exercise, trying to work out. So we're popping right back up, making it just difficult enough for us for this to work. And that is 30 seconds. All right, we're moving right through it. Next, grab your gallon jug. We're gonna do row. You're gonna use this chair, position yourself like this, pull it up. You're gonna be incorporating your back muscles here. You're feeling it right about here. back, make sure that your lower back is straight. You don't want to be hunched over like this. This is very bad for your back. Try to make sure your back is as straight as possible so you don't get those back injuries. So you do that. Go over here and then you switch this side to your gallon water jug row. And 30 seconds again. Wow. Alright, sit-ups. So sit-ups, this is the last one. We have feet on the ground. You're doing you're sitting up. Boom. Two. Now for the modified version, we have a couple different ideas for this. One, you can use your hands to push up to give you that momentum. Two, even if you're just getting your shoulders off the ground, you're still incorporating your ab muscles. So just get them up a little bit or go through here. You can also try and touch your heels as a reference point, but that's a little bit tougher. And uh, yeah, so going through we're gonna go until this says we got 10 seconds more and if you want to do the normal ones I can feel the water moving around in my stomach I might have had too much water all right that is the four minute marker which is where we take our break so we take a little breather we have 30 seconds to one minute as a break so we'll come in we'll chat a little bit these are all exercises that you can do in your home. The exercises that are safe for you to do as long as you maintain good form. So it's a squats, like I said, you wanna make sure you have good posture. I didn't even say that. Have good posture. 
like you're sitting in a chair, you pop back up. You don't want to be bending over forward or slouched. None of those are good. So, good posture, like you're sitting backwards. We have 15 seconds left on our break. So you guys, if you want, you can get some water on your breaks, you can take a seat, whatever it is, to re-catch your breath in between these sets. Five seconds, and we jump right back into it. I'll also make a note. I have my glucometer, my blood sugar tester, and my sugar tablets, just in case. I always carry those with me whenever I work out, because if you do go low at the gym, you wanna be able to fix that. If you have low blood sugar, not a good time to be lifting. So make sure you fix those before you continue your lift. Now we're behind. So, high knees and steps. So we're doing our steps. We have one minute of this, again. And like I said, we're starting over. So we're doing four full circuits for these exercises. If you are able to do the higher, faster paced workout, you go for it. If you can do this for a full minute, four times before each of these circuits, by all means, go for it. If not, High steps, totally okay. You can go up higher if you're flexible enough, or you can just go up right here. And this is a true high knees. You slap in your hands. So if you're able to go here, it's perfect. Looks like we're at a minute marker now, so back to push ups. Doing our modified push ups. Remember, straight back. You don't want to be doing this, you don't want to be doing this. And if you can, try to avoid doing the, the button here. It makes it easier. We don't want to make it easier, we want it to be effective. So, as long as you can maintain good form, down and up. Getting these push-ups in, making sure we're getting our workout and maintaining good form. All right, that is it for push-up. Now we have our squat. Again, shoulder width apart. Butt down. I should also mention we're going for a 90 degree angle. So about here. If you're going down to here, that's not going to do a whole lot. That's not a lot of a workout. So get down to a 90 degree angle, pop back up. Same goes for the chair. We sit down, that's about a 90 degree angle, we pop back up. All right, we have a gallon water jug. Back here. Now, if you're going on your right arm, you want your right leg to be back. Pulling back. Incorporating your back, making sure your back is straight. You always want your back to be what we call neutral. You don't want it to be slumped over because you will develop back problems. So you're going to strain your back, cause injury. Make sure you maintain neutral back, incorporate that back muscle. Try not to lift it the wrong way, or you know, you get different muscles that way. That's a tricep workout. Pulling up with your back, you're switching, getting both sides so you don't turn out lopsided. And then we're done with that. We have sit ups now for 30 seconds. And if it's getting really tough for you guys to do sit-ups, you can kind of use momentum. We prefer not to do that because it takes away from the ab workout. Then it's more of an inertia exercise. So, if you can, keep it nice and controlled. If you need to, you can reach a little bit, use that momentum, but only do it if you have to. So you want to make sure we're targeting the ab muscles as much as possible as long as you're able to do so. Now this one, you're most likely not gonna get injured on, but we still wanna focus on form. So the better your form is, the more likely you'll be able to target the correct muscle groups. I'm assuming that is, I was five seconds short, but that is time. So that is two rounds of the circuit. You're gonna be doing four rounds for a full 15 minute circuit you will get winded on your first shot. It's gonna, your first couple shots, it's gonna take, take some time to get used to it. As you get used to it, you can increase volume, you can increase time, you can decrease your rest. So what we uh, recommend is as you get better at it, you decrease that rest. And so instead of taking a full minute as a break in between each set, 
will take 30 seconds. As that becomes too easy, you add on a few rounds towards the end. If that becomes too easy, maybe it's time to get a gym membership and add some weights to all of those workouts. Or to move up from modifications to the normal workout. So instead of using a chair for squats, then you go for body weight squats. If that becomes easy, add some weights on top, do some weighted squats. But that's really tough to do in a circuit atmosphere because you're doing it for so many repetitions, you're gonna get winded. And when you get really tired, typically your form is the first thing to go. And we don't want bad form because bad form leads to injury. So that's it for this workout. Um, if you guys want more follow along workouts, let us know in the comments. Let us know what type of workouts you guys wanna see. If you would prefer more instructional, like this one is, or if you prefer me to just do a workout and talk over it, let you guys know what I'm doing while I go through the entire workout so that you can follow along at home uh, like a group class, a group class type setting. Uh, we're gonna be here uh, most Saturdays, if not all Saturdays at 10 a.m. We're gonna be doing these live, putting them on YouTube as well. So whether you're watching it on Facebook or on YouTube, both will be shown. And we look forward to seeing you guys in the comments during these live videos. We would love for you guys to ask us questions, especially if it's form related or fitness related. We can answer these questions as we're going through the workouts and give you examples. If you're like, well, what about this type of squat? Or what about lunges, if I were to do a lunge? And we can answer that live for you during the video. And who knows, it might benefit somebody else who also had the same question. So more uh, participation is recommended so that we can help you guys get to your goals, achieve your goals faster, and achieve them safely. We hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. This was number one for weekend warrior workouts. We hope to see you next time. Keep up the fight.